What's going on, everybody? Listen, y'all, I'm excited about tonight. I have a dear friend, a dear brother. I'm actually about to bring you to the room right now um, and real shortly. But listen, before we even get there, I need you guys to hit stream. I need you guys to hit share. I need you guys to go ahead and begin to let mama and everybody know that we're live to have a very important discussion in the midst of Men's Health Month, in the midst of still celebrating fathers, because just because Father's Day is a day does not mean we stop celebrating dads. Um, so right now where you are, just begin to share this with everyone that you know. Uh, we're going live tonight via Facebook. Um, I'll make sure that we also use platforms like YouTube to post for later. And there'll be some clips probably on Instagram. Um, but tonight we're going live right here on Facebook. I'm excited, y'all. Um, to begin this conversation, but I first need you guys to engage. So um, if you could, please just begin to share this right now with everyone you know um, and let them know that we're about to have a conversation about dads, about the validity of dads, about the strength of fathers, about everyone um, that we know who we desire to be present in our lives um, and maybe talk about some issues, some reasons why they aren't. OK, so let's go ahead and begin to share this out with everyone, you know, we're going to have a very transparent conversation, have some real talk, have some real dialogue as it relates to being men and raising um, our children as 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 good as we can. Right. Uh, I mean, kind of navigating and balancing those things out. So I'm going to go ahead and bring him in now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up the room to him. Uh, make some noise. Put your hands together for my brother, Ed Long. Um, y'all, um, I'm excited to have him on with us um, today, um, and he's getting ready to add some phenomenal value. I can't speak on everything. I can't give you his full bio, um, so I'm going to make sure that he has some time right now. Um, let us know, brother, uh, a little more about who you are and, um, you know, where you are right now in life, man. Outstanding. Well, listen, Javon, I appreciate you for your patience. Shout out to everybody who's checked in right now. Listen, I'm just a young man trying to figure it out. Just birthed a child. My wife did, but we were uh, expecting together as she was pregnant. And I'm about 13 days into fatherhood and understanding the complexities now of scheduling things while the baby's saying, I don't care what you got scheduled. <laughs> Feed me, man. Right Feed now. Feed your boy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and all of that, but excited to be a part of this conversation tonight about fatherhood, about sonship, uh, about manhood. Yeah. I am a third generation minister, praying my son would be a fourth generation minister, and he will in his own right. I am a award winning songwriter, as well as an award winning radio personality, and I am licensed at Newburgh Missionary Baptist Church during the time period when my father was trailblazing pastor, as well as possession of a master's degree in religious studies from Brewer Heights University and a bachelor's in business administration from Florida A&M University. I'm a part of the Recording Academy. That's right, that's the group that sanctions the Grammys. If you will, I am a police chaplain with the Cap County Police Department here in Metro Atlanta on the east side, Charlotte, right there with Decatur. Decatur is the county seat. Listen, I can go on and on. I don't want to do that. I want to talk about what we came to talk about. I'm so honored to be, again, in the presence of one Javon Johnson. I stalked this gentleman on Instagram, just <laughs> seeing some of the prolific works that he's doing at that time as a youth pastor with a uh, impactful ministry right there in Central Piedmont, North Carolina. Y'all ain't think I knew nothing about it. Yeah, come uh, on, my man. roots is in Carolina. So there you go. I went to school in Carolina, elementary school and all. So listen, I'm right here with you. Understand yeah. that. I'm a Georgia boy as well. And fathers are needed, whether you're in the Piedmont, whether you're in that Georgia clay, whether you're on the West Coast, whether you are international. Because Paul talks about having a bunch of teachers. Yeah. But we ain't got many fathers, so we got to work through this thing. Man, man, listen, y'all heard the man. Y'all heard the man. Um, I'm honored. I told him already that I'm honored. I think, man, I think we may have connected um, 2020. Um, I wrote the book, I Am Resilient. 
um 12 days of devotional i want to send you a copy sent you a copy and since then we've kind of been having like this 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 ping pong of communication back and forth so i'm glad that we're finally able to make this happen and uh, a very important conversation a very pivotal conversation um you know if y'all don't know who i am my name is javon johnson born and raised in durham north carolina in the Bull City, uh, found my way to Greensboro, North Carolina, um, for another HBCU called North Carolina a and State University. Um, and I mean, I was man, I was living there for like over ten years, thirteen years <laughs> even. Um, and we just moved in February to Mississippi to the SIP. Um, so now we're in the Mid South, um, where I serve as next as next gen pastor at a great church. My wife is is serving here. My my son is in school and that three-year-old son. The history, the, the the thing goes long. But tonight we're talking about everything, dads and just where we are. Man, so listen, man, open up. I want to open up starting here. Um, much honor, much respect to your father, uh, Bishop A. Long, um, who was just a uh, general, general in the faith, general in, in the world, man, I, I want to say. Um, just the seven mountains of influence even, right? And he just made a very pivotal, a very hard uh, footprint in our, in, our, in our earth that will never be removed. So tell us about a life growing up with your dad in the house. Mm, I love it. You yeah. know, that's why I call the book son of a bishop, you feel me? Because uh, so many people knew my father as just that, as a bishop. But the truth of the matter is that I call it the slash syndrome. And as your youth pastoring, uh, you know, pastoring may be in, in your future. And then, you know, serving as a dean may be in your future and a few other things. And those are slashes. And each new title, every elevation that my father walked in, was a slash that kind of separated him from the father or the dad role, which is the most important role to me, in my opinion. Now hear me, what I did not say was that he wasn't a good father. I did not say that he wasn't a good dad, but there's a calling, there's a greater demand from others. I once heard a person say that people treat you how they meet you, wow. all right? And so I met my dad as dad. And so that's how I'm going to treat him. And that's what's uh, reciprocated to me as son. I don't meet him as bishop. I don't meet him as pastor. I don't meet him as, you know, um, one with an honorary doctorate and, and one as a Grammy Award winner. Yeah, my dad won a Grammy. I, I managed to facilitate the process in which he and Ludacris connected and he was featured on a song called Freedom of Preach, which Ludacris won a Grammy for album of the year, rap album of the year. So all of these things are, you know, make him MAGA, if you will. And I'm not talking about Trunks MAGA. I'm talking about just magnanimous in, yeah. in people's eyes, if you will. But for me, daddy is where I met him. And so daddy is is how I treat him. So, you know, there's there's this dichotomy of being father while being called to the nations, being being dad while, while being in, 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 the, in the White House meeting with multiple presidents, you know, uh, while being on CNN, being dad, while ministering to thousands every Sunday in person, not not just virtually. You know, a lot of people are ministering to thousands virtually and restream and restream. But we're talking about people really being in the sanctuary. OK. In the Georgia Dome, having the largest resurrection, some call it Easter, service annually at the Georgia Dome. Some 30, 40,000 people year after year after year. More people than they even gather at the Vatican out to see the Pope, all right, annually. And so here it is. All of those things still amount to, hold up, bro. Dad, what's up? Yeah. Yeah, And your question is so apropos right now because yeah. that's really what it boils down to, to fathers in general. The challenge is, hey, I got a Zoom. And you know me as the son of a bishop. You yeah. know me as Ed Long Jr. You know me as minister and pastor and various things. But my son don't care. My yeah. son don't even know. what He just met me. <laughs> <laughs> right. And doctors say he can barely see me. Right, right. But the word of the Lord says that my sheep know my voice. And when I speak to him, he responds to that. Yeah. And so 
the challenge for me is the same challenge that was to my father. That's to every father yeah. in balancing purpose and calling and all of that yeah. being a pastor, but understanding that one's first church is your address. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I so respect my father in regards that as I'm growing, I'm understanding the pressure that, you know, he may have felt right. in trying to juggle these things. Uh, but my dad was the chaplain for my high school football team. So, you know, we had that time on the sidelines while I'm playing Friday night football as he could make it. So he didn't make all my games as some of my teammates' parents may have, but he was involved right. in a greater level than some of my teammates' parents could have been. He found a way to utilize his natural skill set and his life calling yeah. to infuse that into my life and be present. Yeah, you know, my dad bought our team, our football team, uniforms when we when we had a, a need. You know, was able to raise some money through the church and do that. So there's a level of you start to put on on the scale. Yeah, quality of time and impact. Yeah, and there's major impact even when there was sometimes low quantity of time. There still was major impact. He's not even physically here right now. Yeah. So there is no quantity of time right now, yeah. but yet we're still having these types of conversations because of the impact, wow. if you will. Um, and it makes you cherish the memories that you do have yeah. even more so. You know, working out together at home. We had a little gym set up in the basement. Um put my younger siblings toys and things of that nature together. You know, I'm honored my younger brother's upstairs right now. He came by, so I'm showing him, you know, the baby and he's just taking so, so, so much to his nephew. Um, they share the same or similar names and all. And so uh, my dad just, he tried to make sure that he majored in the majors. Yeah. And I don't think he overstressed himself in majoring in the minors, but making sure that he had impact. Man. Man, I think I think so. Two things stood out to me in this conversation, and I'm I'm really big on ensuring that you know that dads, my friends, even those around me understand that our first mission, especially man, guys in ministry, you know, there's so many misconstrued images of the presence or lack of a presence of their pastor in their household because all you know is to see pastor in the pulpit, and the fact that you said present that he was actually there in the house. But, but less than that, but more than that, we mean his impact is that he's actually active in what he did as a father. And so I think in our generation is that we have so many men who may be present um, in the house, still mm -hmm. with mom, you know, doing his thing, taking care of the bills, taking care of the household, but maybe he's mentally or emotionally or spiritually checked out. Mm. And so for your father to be who he was, and to be who he was to everyone else, but yet still find opportunities to impact you and your relationship with him. And so these seeds that even after his death, he's still very, um, even now present, right? He's present through how you're going to end up fathering your, your child and how your brother ended up fathering his children as, as well. And I think that it goes over to this next question because um, I was actually having a conversation yesterday about, about, about daddy issues, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And and sometimes, my dad, it'll be 10 years in August when he passed away. I was 21 years old, uh, going to be 22 years old, right there in my senior year of college, right? And my dad was very present, very impactful in my life, hanging out, uh, rebuked me, got me together, um, <laughs> You know, real quick, but I I, I I long for that now. I'm a grown man, my own son. I, I long, I love, tell me I'm out of order. Get me together, you know, help, hold me accountable to where I need to be as a man. Um, so did you ever feel, because sometimes when your dad is this pivotal role, my dad wasn't, you know, Eddie Long, I'm uh, sure <laughs> Eddie Long Jr. Was so, uh, long whatsoever, but he was a very pivotal role in our community. Did you ever feel as if you were, you were struggling against his calendar, against his schedule, even? 
um because this is for anybody it ain't just for you who had uh bishop mm -hmm. long as a as a father but anyone who may like man my dad worked so much like i don't even i don't necessarily even ever see him do you ever feel like it was like a like a you versus calendar absolutely um <laughs> i yeah. think that's natural you yeah. know uh i i think that before it's actually factual yeah it it it, it can ju it's just a natural assumption you yeah. know yeah. um Again, if you see someone who is moving and shaking and doing things, then the assumption is, hey, this person, my ask of them may be a big ask to just get their attention. Here it is. I reach out to you on Instagram. I'm seeing you teach and I'm seeing you do this, do that, all that. And my words to you are, hey, man, uh, I'd love for us to connect when you have some time. Yeah. That yeah. statement automatically yeah. uh, confirms that I'm competing with Javon Johnson's calendar. That's good. That's good. So now it's just a matter of how robust that calendar is. Yeah. So absolutely felt that I was competing with this calendar. It was nothing for my dad to be gone three, four nights out of the week, yeah. traveling, you know, ministering in two or three cities, crusading, getting back for Bible study, all of those types of things. Yeah. And so... You know, um, I had a schedule, too, especially mm -hmm. in my teenage years. You know, I'm playing ball, uh, football, running track, involved in youth ministry at the church, the step yeah. team and various things of that nature, uh, working a part time job. Hey, I got parties on my calendar, you know, <laughs> <laughs> real talk. You know, yeah. this is what's going down Saturday night. How I'm going to get to that? How I'm going to sneak? What lie I'm going to tell so I can pull up, you know? Right. I got an agenda. I got some chicks I'm trying to get with, all yeah. that kind of stuff. So, yeah. hey, you busy? I'm busy too. You know, you, you, you worry about you know, it. <laughs> hey, you know, and so it's all about the mindset that you have um, or what have you. But yeah. in all sincerity, I knew that if I needed my dad, yeah, I could get him. Yeah. Now, if I was hollering at him and, and he got the notion that, oh, this can be tabled to another time or what have you, then, hey, you know, there it is. That may not be the hill that he, you know, is is is, is caring to die on or, or is not that big to him. Yeah. But, you know, if, if I got to get him, yeah. you feel me? Yeah, yeah. I could get him. Yeah. Um, I got a chapter in my book. It's called Secure the Bag. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm sitting here showing out. I talk about how I was acting up, you know, uh, giving my educators my butt, if you will. Yeah. And this was a moment that my dad needed to show up. And yeah. it's a good chapter to read because you know, it's a lot of crown jewels yeah. that other parents who are watching this and some other young people, you know, it's, it's about validation. That's really what time yeah. is about and someone making time for you. It's about validating you. And so I think the story that I tell really unpacks your, you, um, um, and provides a great answer yeah. to your question that is applicable for, for all the readers. Man, so so let's 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 talk more about that. I mean, because I, I, you know, I, first of all, I'm gonna get a couple copies of the book. Um, all right, I'm holding you to it. I'm I heard sure. you said a I'm couple copies. A couple copies of the book, man, um, <laughs> I'm getting ready to do, you know, I'm a, I'm a full spectrum doula as well. So mm -hmm. I'm wearing the only African-American male doulas probably, you know, in the Time world. out. Go ahead. Time out. Go ahead. We 13 days in. Yeah. 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 And it's about five, six, 12 women in this birthing war. Yeah. Looking at my wife's twat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fellas, y'all jump in the comments. How you feel about another man? Come on, hey, yeah, I got you. you step Good. in. Come on. Take care of you right there, right quick for you. I got you right here. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 I think the male role and being a doula, um, I don't necessarily care too much about the birthing process of of everything. I care more about preparing you to give birth and okay. the autumn end of it, right? So, how do I help spouse? How do I help you all together come up with your plan of action um, emotionally, spiritually, as it relates to preparing your minds, your body, your household for this baby? And then once the baby gets there, actually running with that plan. Um, because Time out. 
Sorry, I ain't mean to cut y'all. No. But you are truly peculiar. You, you, you solidify. I'm sitting here just thinking about this. This man is a doula. We interviewed five, six doulas. Nowhere did a male come up on no option. And you are peculiar. A peculiar people. Peculiar. Go ahead. I interrupted you. I'm sorry. And uh, so, no, man, my wife, my wife, uh, she became a, a postpartum doula. And then she got the training to become a full spectrum doula. And she was like, you should do it. And I was the only guy in the class. And I reached out in, in the doula world and see what the men there were. Either they were um, Caucasian and homosexual um, or they, oh, I found two other, uh, three other, two other African-American males. Uh, one is actually in Charlotte. The other, I want to say, is in Georgia. Um, and so we kind of stay connected as much as possible, man. But out there in the world, there's not many, um, unless, especially not heterosexual. And that's so, and but so that's a, that's a that's a that's a disconnection between people like doula. Oh, you must be gay. Like no, I just, like, <laughs> I just care about the birthing per partner or the spouse or the man, making sure that he's prepared. Also, because your body's changing, the baby's here. How does he make sure that he can take care of both of y'all and himself? And here's uh, the thing: dealing with the homosexual tip as well. You know, honestly, the old me, if I would have known about this. You see it a whole bunch of boom, boom, boom. Hey, I don't see what's gay about it. If <laughs> you really look, yeah. hey, I'm seeing, I'm looking at booty and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, so man, it's 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 a world, man. It's a world within itself. So I'm I'm a, what I think we're like a year next month into being full spectrum doulas. Wow. And so I'm beginning to you know figure out um, my my you know I got some classes I'll get ready to launch probably you know beginning of the next year and. You know, I've had guys ask me questions. My wife has already been doing some some partner work, you know, that kind of stuff. I've been helping the dads on the other end. So it's a world by itself, man. And I think your book even is a needed resource mm. right, for these guys who are especially new dads who are trying to trying to figure out, like, what does this world mean? Because sometimes I think there's a, I think society will say um, <clears throat> make money, pay the bills. Make sure everybody eat. That's that is your basis for contribution. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you got money coming in. Everyone's eating. You're good. Um, but the wife could be in need of something more emotional. And so, you do you have any suggestions? I know you're on 13 days in. Um, but what do you say to the guys, to the to the to the, to the men out there who either are expecting? Um, are right where you are as it relates to being emotionally present in your household. Uh, what I say to the guys who are in that situation is, um, don't ask me because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> so, <laughs> Listen, sometimes I don't know either. I'm, I'm three years in. I'm like, man, I'm trying to figure out this thing too. My answer is I only know a little bit more than what you may know right now. Yeah. And that, that's what I can share with you. Yeah. Um, I would say about six months ago, yeah. I'm watching a YouTube video because it wasn't much content out there. And one guy, I don't even remember his name. He's probably got 100,000 views or something on this video, which is very low when you think there's not a lot of content on YouTube for men. Mm -hmm. And then the one or two videos only have a couple hundred thousand reviews right. where if you look at stuff for women it's in the millions mm -hmm. so it means that the wife ain't watching it and the men ain't watching it, it it's, it's to your point it's just like yeah yeah that's yeah. the sperm donor <laughs> got you <laughs> right and whatever and i and i that that was that was piss poor to me yeah. you know I, I i felt like we need more content so i'm really glad to hear that you're in this space and this is a, a space that i'm challenging myself to kind of um be more vocal. I'm, I got a guy on my call tonight who I bumped into. I was doing an invocation for this event at Clark Atlanta College, yeah. university rather, over the weekend. They're having a baby, really going through the same process as us, a water birth, fully natural, all that kind of stuff. I'm like, yo, and in the same network, uh, same yeah. hospital network. And yeah. so I said, I got to talk to y'all. He texted me last night to talk, but it was like, bro, this ain't the night. The baby, this ain't the night. Yeah. I got him tonight, though. Yeah. But my point is, that about six months ago after watching this video, I just started having all these downloads from the Lord into my head. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And I'm an acronym guy. You know, I, I, I'm a guy that if I got something I can roll up, I can commit to that. Yeah. And PAL is what came yeah. in, in, into my, in my being. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we all know PAL means or stands for PAL. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's got a buddy. Kids play. We played with it growing up. My buddy, my buddy. That's my pal, you know. Right. And, you know, being a chaplain, most police departments have what they call the PAL, Police Athletic League. Mm -hmm. And the Athletic League, the Police Athletic Leagues, usually are the arm they use for community outreach. Again, being a pal to the community. Yeah. And for me, what a pal is, is being present, mm -hmm. being active, mm -hmm. and being loving. Present, active, and loving. Yeah. Uh, that's it. So Ed Long Jr., I had to coin that. Yeah. And, you know, because number one, how many deadbeat dads are there? I, you may know these statistics. Uh, I, I'm going to dive into it a little more. Yeah. I, I would hope that it's reduced with our generation. Yes. Right. From the previous and from the previous and so on. Right. With just being present, you know, hit records like Papa was a Rolling Stone. We don't really have that many in our demo mm -hmm. uh, now. Those type of songs. So that, that's a, 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 a cue of a shift. But to be present now, just because I show up doesn't mean I've I, 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 I've shown up. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. I've been on yeah. dates with people. Sure, you have. You there? Yeah. But you thinking about somebody else? <laughs> right. You right. know, all right. of that. You're just not involved. So I want to make sure that we are active. Yeah. That's that's yeah. hands on. That's washing bottles. That's. Mm -hmm. You know, changing diapers, not just sitting around. Oh, the boy look good. Hey, 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 look just like me. All right, we got you down on that part. You know, we can look at a picture and see that. You know, let's let's be active. All right. 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 And, right. and, and then asking. You know, that's yeah. one thing that I did. I asked my, my my spouse. I said, Hey, you know, what what are some of the things that you need from me? Now I'm gonna tell y'all why this is important, fellas. To ask it on the front side. I, I asked that question when we was on the way to the hospital for labor. The mm -hmm. first time, because we went twice, <laughs> um, the day before and then the actual day. But I asked the question, and I got it from you know a YouTube video, yeah. uh, and I put it in my own ways. But here it is: there are expectations that your spouse can have of you that you don't even know nothing about. Yep, that's in yep. marriage, first of all. Yeah. that's in dating. Yeah, that's in a lot yeah. of things. So. Yeah. You can be in covenant with a person and not even know that y'all in covenant. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you you're wrong because they had the expectation. Mm -hmm. I'm one that I live in the space of you can't hold me to nothing I ain't agreed to. Mm -hmm. If I ain't tell you I'm gonna take the trash out on Tuesdays at five, don't come yelling at me about the trash at 505. You know that I don't know, and we yeah. never agreed on this. <laughs> so <laughs> but it's wisdom. Yeah. As the word of the Lord tells us to dwell with your spouse according to wisdom. Yeah. To know your person or to get to know your person and get ahead of certain things. So ask the question. Because more likely a young lady is watching videos, asking mm -hmm. women questions, all that. What should I expect? What you well, he mm -hmm. need to be doing this. You should be all right. Mm -hmm. And and it may never transfer to you. Yeah. It might yeah. never be communicated to you. Yeah. So yeah. just take the initiative and ask, hey. What is it that you desire from me? What is it that you need from me? All that I ask those questions. And then things were shared. Well, I would like you to hold my hand. I would like for you to do this. So if I would like for you to speak up on my behalf, especially if I if I'm not able to communicate. All yeah. that. so now I'm like, okay, I can do that. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. And she didn't really say anything that I'm like, no, I I, I. so now we in agreement and I know what's up. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Then you know, you, you want to go the next step. Uh, I, I kind of live by a mantra, you know, eat the frog. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. The point is, do mm -hmm. the thing you don't want to do so it's out the way and then you can do everything else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm also the type of person that I'm going to speak to the elephant in the room. So here it is. You got high mortality rates. Yep. Infant mortality rates, yep. birth and mother mortality rates in various hospitals. You need to research this thing. Yeah. What yeah. hospitals have high cesarean rates? What hospitals 
have high uh, rates where the wife, uh, the mother goes in, but then come back out. Right. Right. What race is higher? Yeah. All of these type of things. So I asked the question because it's important to know if it comes down to you or the baby, mm -hmm. what's your desire? Yeah. Yeah. You know, questions like that, and I'm going slow for a reason because I want this to hit. Yeah, that's good. It, it, it causes people. That's good. To deal with the avoidable. Mm hmm and go ahead and go through that emotional cycle. Mm -hmm. I just us asking me asking the question and us talking about it for 10, 15 minutes. She was like, Whew. Yeah. Hold on. I didn't I I ain't even whoa, what what? <laughs> yeah. 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 It helps us be on the front side of potential regret. Yeah. Because and also, you have to really face yourself. Do I want to live? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is my baby worth, or or maybe it's not worth thing? Is what God? Do you? Yeah. In my if this if we were facing a a a, a David Bathsheba firstborn mm -hmm. situation, you know, what's the trauma that could come with that? Yeah. If we're sitting here facing the situation, where is Two women arguing over a baby in the presence of Solomon. Well, do I, I want my baby? But if you're gonna kill him, just take him. Just I, I, at least the baby can live. You, yeah. you deal with emotional things before you're in that emotional, full-blown situation. Yeah. So these are just some crown jewels, man, that I, I, I share with fellas preparing for that moment. So, so, so what you're saying is you and I need to go on together on these classes. Come on, come um, on. Because, man, I think you're hitting on some very important things. Being emotionally prepared for the process itself um, is very important as a man. And I think we don't have enough discussion, like you said. We don't have enough discussion because a lot of us have not been nurtured in the area of being present during the birthing process. Mm -hmm. I'm just rubbing the belly. Like, I'm just rubbing the belly. You know, that's just, I'm here. I make sure she's good. She's comfortable. But what are you going to do to prepare yourself and to have an open dialogue with her? I mean, so stuff you're hitting on is like, I mean, I want to like throw you some, throw you the keys, man. Because <laughs> guys don't, you know, guys don't research hospitals and they're not as proactive as what you were mentioning. And some of the stats you were even hitting um, uh, about infant mortality rates and especially in African-American women and the maternity rates um, and their mortality rates, man. Uh, and, and hemorrhaging even and asking the right questions when you go to your doctor's appointments. And, and so that's why um, if, if your spouse isn't as present, um, isn't as, as active, having a doula is so important because you need an advocate, right? You need someone in the room who's going to help ask the questions. Like, cause the whole time the wife is like, the, the, the woman's like, listen, I'm pregnant. I'm tired. I'm just trying to get up out of here. But you know, you gonna ask the questions. Okay. So, so we, if you're doing cesarean, um, what kind of medication are you giving her? And can I be in a room? And and who's doing it? And 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 what school they go to? Like you want to ask those questions. You want to make sure that you're as actively um, involved as possible because it also translate over to what's going to happen when that baby come out. Right. Um. And what I've seen too much of is I've seen a lot of guys um who who love to say this this my seed um but aren't but don't have anything of value to add. Mm -hmm. Um, so you, then you have a broken household where a woman's just happy, just happy to have you around to have a family, but you aren't necessarily present. Mm -hmm. And, and that's where, and that's where some of these stats come in. So we'll talk about some of these stats, man. We can go on all night. Um, so, so if you guys aren't familiar already, there's a national fatherhood initiative and, uh, they have this whole, these stats called, um, fathers matter. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and some of these stats were like this, um, uh, father says so. So this whole study says that that father absence crisis in America. Um, and I shared this one of my first posts I made about us even going live. Uh, but there are four times greater risk of poverty when there is not a man in the household. Mm. More likely to have behavioral problems when there's not a man in the household. Two times greater to have a risk of infant mortality. If there's not a man present and that's what kind of hit my heart mm -hmm. as a doula 
is now now I'm tracking you know things around me, and so I asked the question. Even I asked the question to one of the representatives at, at at a national office. I said, "Now why is that a case?" I asked the question to someone in Greensboro who actually leads up some efforts like this. I asked that question. He said, "Because um, women are, are more likely to have a more successful birth, and they have a, they actually have a support person." Someone who's going to help walk. They, they're at home, right? So their feet are swollen. The swollen. They're going to help them lift their feet up. They, they they notice something wrong with their body. They're they're helping to address what's wrong with their body. If there's not anyone there, there's not a male role there during the night times, during the, during the evening, during the doctor's appointments. It's a it's a higher chance of infant mortality rates. And so it goes to my next my 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 deeper question, man. The state of black communities have historically, you know this have historically and politically seen the removal or the missing father. Wow. Right? Historically. And we, we can we can take it back to the 70s when there was an attack on the Black household by saying, we'll only give you access to certain things like welfare and food stamps and better access to certain things like that if there isn't a male role in the house. So now you got dad who's there now having to leave the house because now it gives you a better chance to have access to certain things by the government if I'm not present. And that's not been perpetuated all the way down our generations. So the question is this, what are your thoughts on all this? And I'm not saying that this is, this is happening all over the, I'm not saying that this is like something happening in every single neighborhood, every single black man is just missing. But it is, a, it is an epidemic within the black community. What are your thoughts on this, man? I know you have a very open mindset around the black community, around politics, <laughs> around what we are, what we aren't doing. But what do you, what do you think about all this? You know, I'm, I'm ingesting a lot of what you're saying, and that, that's great data. You know, uh, my bonus mother statement, she would say often, <laughs> that the devil is in the details. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our washing machine went out. Yeah. Early this week. And so we're trying to get a new washing machine. We found one and you know, this appliance store and they got it on sale for a thousand dollars. We're about to order it. Yeah. And as soon as we're finna order it, then they come out with all these other fees mm -hmm. that drove the price point up fifteen hundred dollars was the out the door fee. Yeah. We said we straight. Yeah. Because the information that was in the details mm -hmm. changed the game. Y'all really aren't offering us something lesser. You just restructure the numbers to yeah. get us in the door. Yeah. For men, you know, we, we, we're sold on, hey, man, run the numbers up. Mm -hmm. Get as many chicks as you can. Mm -hmm. All of this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, um, it's nothing like having a boy, you know, your name will live forever. Yeah. We, we, you know, some of us are sold on the glam. Yeah. Yeah. But when we get into the details of man, you know, you, you're the lifeline of the family. Man. She's carrying the baby, but you're carrying her, if you will. Yeah. And the things that you talked about emotionally, you know, I, I, I'm, we get to about month seven. My wife can't even lift her legs in the bed. Yeah. Lifting this, doing this, all these type of things. And so, you know, I slide into the mindset of, okay, she's carrying him. So let me try to carry everything else. Let me carry this bag. Let me carry that. Let me put this on. Let me, all of these things to take that, that weight off, even still now. As much as I can, yeah. Um, there's an emotional aspect that you mentioned. We're in the hospital, and even before our doula arrived, there were things that, um, had she been there by herself, I don't know that she would even be alive. Wow, wow. There was a moment where we were in the birthing room by ourselves for like nearly an hour and there's no IV in her. There's nothing even monitoring her heart rate or anything. Wow. But I'm running through the hallways, you know, again, advocating mm -hmm. for her. 
Um, we share watches, Apple watches. And so in the middle of the night, my watch would vibrate and I could see her heart rate going up. Mm -hmm. Or with her employment, mm -hmm. certain things on her job are really stressing her. But many women, especially who are trending upward in corporate America or in their field, they don't want to be considered weak. Yeah. They don't want to be that person so they don't take a break when it's necessary yeah or speaking up and being an advocate even on her job really kind of crossing hr lines if yeah. you will and saying hey y'all got to let her chill because i see the effect that, that she's not going to tell y'all about yeah and this heart raised heart rate is affecting her and it's passed on that's trauma that can go to the baby yeah so there there's i'm, I'm talking about doing life together yeah. And there's so many things, so many places, like being, being a pal, so many other spaces before we ever even get to the birth Yeah, that attribute to the health of the child. That when we, I was watching, I mean, reading the article, and it's funny because I've been talking about this. Uh, I'm working on a message about the genealogy mm -hmm. transfer. Matthew, the book of Matthew starts off talking about here's the genealogy yeah. of Jesus. Mm -hmm. They can now confirm that trauma was passed genetically from, through those who were slaves. Yeah. Even through to us. Yeah. Yeah, so this is not a hypothetical thing. This is a real thing. Yeah. So we don't need to add insult to the injury that we've suffered from others by insulting ourselves and not being part, being I think he's a little frozen here. If you're still talking, a little froze right now. Still talking, you're frozen. No worries, no worries. I'm pretty sure it'll work itself out in a few minutes. So, y'all, if you're just joining us right now, um, thank you guys for coming on. Thank you all for coming on. Um, he had to hop off to go ahead and get his connection together. But thank you guys for coming on. We're almost done. Uh, but please feel free to continue to share this. Continue to share this. Let's continue the conversation. We're having a discussion tonight about fathers, about daddyhood. We're having a discussion tonight about making a house a home. And we have our very special guest, um, Ed Long Jr. on, who is helping us to unpack this, right? Man, I know you have some connection issues, um, so I'm pretty sure you came back on. You good now? I would hope so. I think yeah. the enemy is like, nah, y'all, y'all, y'all dropping too much. Y'all, y'all healing his bloodlines right now. Let me let me get it in between this. They trying so, to cut the umbilical umbilical cord too soon. He's trying to trying to mess us up. So I, I'm just helping everyone who's just coming on um understand what we're doing, how things are going. But I want you to finish your statement. I, you you hit on something very important, and I want you to finish. Go ahead. I don't know where it cut off at. Tell me the last thing I said. Um, uh, genealogy and how, th how trauma is passed down through bloodlines around slavery and it's been tracked, it's been traced, it's been proven, and that's when things kind of faded out. Again, it's a fact now, you know. Uh, it's always been a fact, but, yeah. you know, some people don't believe something until it's documented by a certain group, right. if you will. And right. so the Caucasian man has now documented what right. we already knew. Right. And it's taking a level of responsibility to say that trauma truly has been passed down. And yeah. so that that is injury that we as a as a race of people have suffered. And so I'm saying, let's not add insult to that injury. Yeah. Let's not insult ourselves by not being educated, by not 
being present, by not being involved, by not doing the work, all right, to ensure that we have healthy, caring, and healthy births. You feel what I'm saying? It is not one or the other. If we're going to pull the pants down and shoot up the club, let's make sure we're on the dance floor, you know, <laughs> for, for the whole party, you know. That's all I'm saying. And and so I think one of our one of our, one of our almost last questions, and I want you to have a have a another discussion. I want you to have a, a short synopsis discussion around your book, how people can get it, uh, how people can connect with you. But my last question for the night, man, we gotta we gotta follow up some kind of some kind of way, brother. We gotta connect, do something something else together, definitely around fatherhood. I gotta bring you out, maybe. Um, Please. Maybe God gonna have me do a conference or some of some sort for fathers. And it don't so, have to be nothing big. We can, man, yeah, listen. Man. I, I've had people who try to do things and be impressive. I don't yeah. care about none of that. Yeah, we I, I'm about to work, bro. <laughs> so, so this is this is probably just gonna drive, drive us right home. Um, our discussion tonight is how to make a house a home, and there being this this disconnection between masculinity and fatherhood, mm -hmm. right? And I think that just because you have the ability to make children does not mean that you have the ability to be a father mm. or a daddy. And I know that to be true because I was diagnosed with male factor infertility over three years ago. Mm. And in a world where we didn't talk about, still don't talk about male factor infertility the same way we do with female infertility, because that's the only way we know infertility is by the female having a quote unquote problem. So, so your ability to to produce a, a seed, rightfully so, and and have that does not make you a man necessarily. Um, let alone you having a lot of kids make you a father, a lot, or make mm -hmm. you make you a present dad. So, what truly makes a house a home? What truly makes a house a home? And I want you to go right into that question and then definitely go into your book. Let us know where this came from and let us know how we can get it, all that stuff like that. First of all, you know, I feel you. Yeah. Um, I, I, I relish in your transparency. I yeah. know that when we tell our story, it, it's, it's a little easier mm -hmm. to tell the story each time you tell it. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's easier Right. To accept the truth of your story. Right. And sometimes sharing it is a reminder. Yeah. Sometimes that's a window where the enemy say might say, hey, see, so you, you're not valuable. Or you don't matter. Or, you know, if God made you like this, then this, and just so many questions yeah. Yeah. that can come to one's mind. So I salute you for not stopping in telling your story you, and being forthright and transparent because in opening that door up, yeah, the enemy can come in with some negative thoughts, but you're also opening the door for some brothers who may have been outside in the cold. Yeah. Emotionally, psychologically, confidence wise, et cetera, concerning that topic, to come on in and find rest in you. Yeah. Yeah. And say, hey, I know you're out there. I've been where you are, but come on inside and yeah. let me help console you. Let me help to build you up and direct you. Yeah. Put a plan together for success and that there javon is what i believe is what a father is yeah what a home is yeah. it's an open door to invite one in to say i'm going to nurture you i'm going to affirm you i'm going to build you up i'm yeah. going to help you recognize things in and about yourself that you can't right now that you're not yeah. mature enough to that set you up for success. I think that in Genesis chapter one, uh, around verse 26 and, and mm -hmm. 27, mm -hmm. I think that's what God did to man is, hey, I'm affirming you. I'm telling you your g skills, your gifting, all of that. Yeah. Yeah. So that you can be set up for success. Yeah. Somebody yeah. else may have donated the sperm. Yeah. Who was not qualified to tell you what was all in that sperm. Yeah. Because maybe even themselves, they don't know what's in them. Yeah. Yeah. And they're still looking for someone to affirm them. But my prayer for us all. Yeah, man. Is that somebody comes along and is able to look you in your eyes 
is able to put a hand on your shoulder and say, hey, you are loved. You are destined, you are purpose. There's still a Jeremiah 1 5 for you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Yeah, I knew you. There's still a peculiarness about you. Yeah. That I want to use and make you have impact in this earth. Man. Whew. Listen. Listen, he preaching. You know, he don't want to be called pastor right now, but uh, <laughs> it's all you. It's all you. So, man, tell us more about your book. How can we get it? We may have to do like like a like a like a book club for men to even unpack this book. But let, me, let us let us know the inside, um, the heart of it. You know, don't, don't, give, don't give everything away, but let us know more about this book. How can we get it? Where did it come from? Absolutely, man. I definitely um, appreciate being connected with you and us being there together and, and, and chat and talk or what have you. Um, great question, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, this book is called, again, Son of a Bishop. I am the son of a bishop, but first and foremost, I am the son of Bishop Eddie Lee Long, and I'm the son of God. And in this book, I share about 14 stories and memoirs concerning my dad, things he taught me, things I observed, his overcomings, mm -hmm. and then maybe even some of his shortcomings where as a son, I was able to uplift him and direct him. Yeah. It's a two-way street. And so this book really helps to empower families to give yeah. parents a voice and to also give offsprings a voice, those who are legacy. Yeah. You, all of us are somebody's son and daughter, and it's not just for children. Mm -hmm. But I've had reports from people who've read it who are 50, 60 years old mm -hmm. that has helped them to put their familiar relationship, their paternal, their maternal relationship in a better perspective. Yeah. The parent they had that has even transitioned. And so it's just so many crown jewels, so many uh, nuggets in here that will help you. I guarantee it. If not, I give you a refund because <laughs> I'm not trying to sell a book. Yeah. I am trying to set some people free and wow. push impact wow. transparently. Yeah. Or you can grab it on Amazon. The title is Son of a Bishop. Yeah. But you can go to my website, edlongjr.com. Go to my Instagram and Twitter page. It's in my name on the screen, at Ed Long Jr. Hit follow, DM me. Um, I'd love to continue this conversation and really help families to be successful as families are helping me. Listen, 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 y'all. I want you guys to truly um, grab this information. If you take notes tonight, let us know. Um, give me some feedback. Let us know how this was for you. Um, everything I do, everything I do is for a resource. Everything I do is for a resource. I want to make sure um, that the people, the men, the brothers around me have access to it. My, my, my father passed away 10 years ago. I had no idea how to live life without him because all I could see, all I could foresee was graduating college with him, being married with him, having my first son with him. Mm. So the fact that, that all that was dead in, in two days um, had me to have to reprogram my whole entire life. So now everything I do for men and for black, for dads is out of resource. And so um, I'm so blessed, man, to have you on to tonight to talk about that book, to talk about that resource for men who may not have the language or have the capacity even to discuss um, the trauma maybe of not having a father or the trauma of having dad in the household, or maybe even the dads who are trying to navigate now how to have a better relationship with their son and how to use this book to do so. And so, man, I thank you so much, man. Um, you see his website up here again. Um, we're going to connect again to make sure that we have some kind of a part two <laughs> that people can be blessed by something in person, maybe. Um, but we also have this connect group. Um, you can scan the QR code. It's the resilient man community. Um, uh, man, listen, brother, over like, I think last year I ran 155 days, a mile or more every single day. And, wow. um, I didn't know why I was doing it. The Holy spirit just said run. And, and I just started running for 30 days. I'm like, I'm gonna keep running. And I asked him to be a part of it. And what it was doing for me, um, the Holy spirit was creating a, a sense of therapy for me. 
And, and I had no idea that I needed that sense of freedom. And so the resilient man challenge came out of that. We ran 30, we ran for 30 days, one mile or more, but now the resilient man community is for all, all guys who are just looking for a space to be vulnerable and need some encouragement. So every morning I send a text message um, of encouragement, a prayer, prayer request, scripture, whatever you need. Um, and we also have some Bible study going on this month as well. So scan the QR code, let's tap in, um, make sure you get my brother's book. And if you haven't already, I am resilient. Um, 12 man, 12 days of um, a devotional inspiration for black men. Okay. So this is where I tapped in to about seven, four other guys in my life. One of those being um, Bishop George Brooks. Um, and let and let them just be transparent about their own personal stories, and we have affirmations and time for devotionals and X, Y, and Z. So I need you guys to tap in, um, be a part of what God is doing, um, give you these resources to help build up other men in your life because it is vital. It is vital. Um, listen, man, do you mind praying us out of here? For sure. Yeah, man. I'm with. I'll be honest. Um, whatever your need may be or whatever you want to celebrate, you can just drop it in the chat right now. Yeah. And I'm sure there are people who are watching who uh, will be interceding and all of that. All right. Shout out to uh, Alicia O'Neill. Hey, we appreciate you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. Conference of Fathers. That's big. That's big. Hey, listen. God is on your side. Mm-hmm. Understand that no matter what challenges we are facing, the Lord is on our side. Yeah. My prayer for you is that you find the favor that David had continually, that although death was on his right, mm. the sun still came over that same mountain. The sun was on his side, still shining in the midst of all types of adversity. Some men on here may be facing some sort of erectile dysfunction, mm -hmm. some sort of reproductive uh, challenges. There may be some women who are facing that. There may be some people who I know this country is having a standoff concerning abortion. And that may have been a decision that you made at some point in your life and still struggling to forgive oneself. Uh, there may be parents who abandoned their children and now are trying to figure out where in the world is my son or my daughter. I'm aligning my hope with your righteous hope. Yeah of reconnection, forgiveness, you feel me? Of genitals, working properly, fully functional, yeah. hallelujah. Yes, Lord. According to Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, yeah. being fruitful yeah. and being able to multiply. Lord, I'm calling you at your word mm -hmm. that all of us, Lord, would operate yeah. as you intended for the first Adam to operate yeah. in your image. Hallelujah. And in your likeness, we speak dominion over everything that is not of, of you yeah. that is posing itself against us. And we take your word as true. You said it, so we believe it. And that settles it. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And listen, family, thank you all so much for being part of our Peculiar Dad Virtual Connect Group. Um, and it's like our third one so far, and it's been a blessing. Uh, the next one's coming up real soon. Um, I'll probably be talking about male factor infertility some more, and uh, definitely join my Bible study that's happening this month for the third time this month for, for Men's Appreciation Month. <laughs> and we'll have my brother um, back with us at some point. Listen, y'all, I love y'all. Have an awesome night, um, and I'll see you guys real soon. Thank you.